Ottawa, Dmitry Dimitrenko of Ukraine finished fourth. He's a former national champion, and because Viktor Petrenko went to the Olympic Games, Dmitry did not get a chance to compete in Lillehammer. We've already come to expect in just a couple of years we've been seeing him on the international scene, we have come to expect a little bit of unusual musical selections from Dimitri. Very nice start with a triple axle, double toe loop. He's obviously very happy about that. double axel. Really shows quality, really shows control. to him, you get a feeling of what type of person he is by the style of his program, the way he pulls it off, and it seemed very genuine and very sincere. Dmitry Dimitrenko of Ukraine. The music, the fly, and he was flying early. And he flew right into this triple axe, so not the highest of the triple axes I've seen, but it was fine. Three and a half revolutions into the double toe loop, just fine and charged up his engine for the rest of the program. Absolutely delightful. The camel spin, beautiful, lost it for a tiny second as he went on too deep a forward outside edge, but then brought it back, showing ordinary positions, but making them kind of special. Totally making it his own. The crowd certainly loved it here in Red Deer. 21 years old from Kiev, in Ukraine, sixth at the European Championships, and his marks, the Ukrainian fly gets 5.2, and a 5.3 in there too. Presentation marks will be better, he's happy. Michael Jack. Debbie and Brian, we've heard a lot of great things and a lot of promising things about this skater, Michael Chack of the United States. He's been around for a while, but has burst on the senior scene with some outstanding performances, third in the 93 U.S. Nationals. Tell 
behind which is the serpentine forward under the slow music. But I think it's a good vehicle for him. theme with music from the movie Strictly Ball. You know what's nice about this program is they paid attention to, de to, to detail, not just getting the elements done, the required elements, but pay paying attention to all the details, the steps, the choreography, the flow. Everything seemed to be just one continuous movement and, and, and a purpose from beginning to end. And Brian, one of the things that the judges are really looking for are not just the jumps, but jumps done from difficult footwork entrances. <laughs> like, Whoa. The way his face lit up after he hit the combination. It was nice. He had great flow. Not much to say. It was nice flow. They connected beautifully. So easy. And the Lutz was perfect as well. Entered from very difficult bracket turns. Anytime there is footwork leading into a jump, it makes it more difficult because you haven't time to set it up. And you need the control. What a difference, Brian, between the performance and the warm-up. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes that's the case, too. You know, it's, it all depends on the individual. Here come the marks for required elements. There they are, 5.3. Danish judge gave him a 5.7. Five fours, five fives, and a 5.3 from the Canadian judge. And marks for presentation above the same range. Michael Chack of the United States. Oh. In As they say in sports, home ice is an advantage. That could be one of the reasons why the late Brian Pokar reached international stature so quickly. On the ice of the Stampede Corral, his early years gave a promising insight to his international future. By the time Brian was six, he was skating very well. His flair was very obvious on the ice in his very first Bob Carnival. From there to the bronze medal in Skate Canada in 1978 seemed like an overnight journey. Ice time in Calgary was available and Brian used it to the limit. 1978 was the beginning of a win streak. He won the Canadian Champions that year. He repeated in 79 and again in 1980. His gold in London in 1980 was another reason to believe he was on his way. 
But after ending Canada's world medal drought with the bronze in 1982 at Copenhagen, it was then that Ryan decided the search for gold was over. His classical style made it appear as though he would fulfill his future dream to win a medal in his parents' home country at the Sarajevo Olympics in 1984, but this was not to be. He starred in the professional shows where his style, grace, and good looks made him in such great demand. Ryan had forthright opinions on skating and wasn't reluctant to express them. On this basis, he joined the CTV broadcast crew and was a very popular commentator as we traveled across Canada and around the world for six years. Brian likes to reflect on his bronze medal of 1982 in Copenhagen. But I think actually closest to his heart were the medals he won in Skate Canada. He had one in Vancouver, and then the silver medal in 1980, right here in Calgary, his old hometown. Brian Pokar, another outstanding Alberta skating star, became ill. He kept it to himself till almost the end of a great career on the ice and behind the microphone. He died of AIDS when maturity was just on the threshold. When did you start skating? How old were you? Five years old. And why did you start, start skating? Well, uh, I was watching TV when I was about two and a half. I was, was really interested in uh, the spinning of all the skaters, and I just wanted to do it from there. All right, I have a much tougher question for you. Do you have any superstitions? One. I always put my left skate on first and my right skate on second. Your favorite move on the ice? My favorite move on the ice? Oh, boy. Um, there are a lot of them. There's a, a lot of different ones. Um, triple axel. Uh, when I hit the perfect inside edge and I'm basically angled like this on the ice. When, it put, when I hit perfect around the edge and there's not a sound and you're just gliding, the ice is clean and you hit that perfect one and you just glide, it feels like you're flying. Favorite dish? Yeah. Turus chusa. Which means? <laughs> it's, uh, how do I explain it? It's noodles with uh, bacon and a bit of cottage cheese on top. It's a uh, Hungarian dish. So that's the secret. That's the secret of Elvis. That's why you're able to do quad toe. Maybe. Uh, how do you say it again? Turus chusa. Time's up. <laughs> World champion, Canadian champion. He's also on a Sun Life Skate Canada streak. Every time he's competed at Skate Canada, he's won. 1991 in London, 92 in Victoria. And now, with the music from Total Recall, his new short program. Right off the bat, first element will be the triple axle double pole combination. Maturity in his skating, there's a, there's a growth to his skating that's happened. So great to see.
Now check out the different levels in this footwork. indication of what we're in for this year we're gonna have a great year Elvis Stoico and you know what else pleases me not only was it perfectly skated but choreographically it had a kind of purity about it too it didn't wasn't ducked up it was just the right amount of everything. Strong and sure. Beautiful triple axle, double toe loop combination. He had the, just the right amount of height and the right amount of distance, covered the ice beautifully, and he kept the flow going right through here. But in January at the Nationals, that'll be a triple-triple combination, I'm sure. But we'll see the triple Lutz again. This one with difficult steps going in. Watch how Elvis pulls his chin up, almost making himself thinner and tighter to get the rotation done. This is a, actually a characteristic of his jumping style. Very long edge on the landing of the triple Lutz to another good sign of a great jump. Required elements marks, five sixes, five seven, five point nine from the American judge, and five point eight the rest of the way. For presentation. Five six, five five, another five nine, Elvis Stoiko, the leader. the triple axle double toe the most difficult element for him oh yeah perfectly done That was a double Lutz, but it should have been a triple Lutz. face oh, it was okay I think 
evening he was hot tonight it's a shame the triple lux didn't was, get that last yeah. rotation With, it's a pretty substantial deduction as well it's between 0.3 and 0.4 for not having the required number of rotations don't know what happened he seemed to be sitting on the edge very strongly <laughs> At center ice, taking a few extra bows, he is. The problem on the Lutz happened when he put his toe pick in. He just... Missed somehow. Well, his legs seemed to collapse right in there. Two revolutions only. And he had to fight even to hang on to that. And he knew he was in trouble. Footwork was terrific, however. And he didn't lose the momentum for his program. Very often when a skater has such a major error you kind of give up he did not he carried through still kept the sense of humor twenty four years old born in odessa ukraine grew up in the soviet union emigrated to israel in nineteen ninety one the only member the only israeli athlete ever at the winter olympic games Finished 16th in Lillehammer. Required elements, Mark Brian. I think they're fair. It's a pretty major deduction. Imagine where he would have been if that Lutz had the extra rotation. And better marks for the showman. Michael Schmirken is fourth. Question Britain. He made the Olympic team, competed in Lillehammer. Finished 10th, finished 8th in the World Championships. He's finally arrived, but we understand that recently he's contemplated quitting. Oh, I would hate to see it. There is no one with the flair, the choreography, the musical sense, and the most incredible elements. And so Sebastian's. much to offer to this sport. Oh, you're so right. Well, we're glad he's back. But the reason, Brian, he's thought about it. The triple axle jump. He's... he's carrying a lot of weight on the triple axle and uh, he knows he needs to have it. But boy, he makes up for, for the choreography and program. This is probably the best program of the night. Oh. That was the combination triple flip, double toe, he did a single toe. Major deduction for that. Beautifully balanced program as well. Not all the toughest elements front loaded. Here comes the triple Lutz. Britain of Canada almost stumbled at the end and he fell in the warm-up on that exact same maneuver. 
You know, it, it looked to me as if he's a little bit fatigued. And you know, Red Deer is at about 4,000 feet, which uh, it, it plays on you at the end of the program. His legs, you could just see that the lactic acid was taken over and they were getting a little bit heavy. The beginning and the end of the program, Debbie. Yeah, it seemed to be very up and down. There were moments of brilliance. I think the only, I mean, the major problem, of course, was on the combination. And I think that because the triple flip was so good, I think he was going for the triple toe loop. And his toe slipped as he was picking in right in there. It was almost like the whole blade went down, not just the toe. Yeah, the foot seemed to be slanted sideways, so he was getting the inside edge of the toe pick instead of straight on. And here throughout the footwork, it, it was not what we expected. Several of the steps starting right here were left out. This was the spot where he tripped during warm-up, and it really knocked the wind right out of him. He was chasing his music at this point as well. Very carefree spirit. He loves the crowd more than anything, more than the marks even. Born to entertain. This coach, Jose Norman. The audience is a little disappointed, but a point to deduction for that uh, combination for doing the single toe loop. And when you've seen it performed at its best, as we have, the judges have too. That's what you want. His presentation marks, however, will be enough to lift him to fourth place after the short program. Two Canadians in the top five after the short program at... The Sun Life Skate Canada for 1994, Sebastian Britton is fourth, and the leader is the world champion, Elvis Stoiko. A week going at Skate Canada competitions, uh, your year of uh, success continues. Uh, you still have a free skate to come, but uh, your new program, everyone loved it. Well, thanks. It was, uh, it's always tough to come back from, say, a world championship, and so much happens during the year, and, and it's always tough to get that first one down, and it feels really good. The whole week, I feel great, and um, what can I say? It felt awesome. Even though you are world champion now, and everyone is shooting for the top gun, you still have to perform and go out and do the things that you have to do best. Tell us what you were thinking about during the unveiling of this short program. Well, the mindset keeping away, say, the technical side, a lot of the mindset was to just focus on my own game plan. And usually it's always trying to catch up to everyone else. Now that I'm there, it's always look ahead, clear road, go, 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 and, and never look back. Always just keep pushing. And um, I never wanted, if I get to that position as world champion or Olympic champion or what have you, that I would not back off, that I would constantly keep working, and that I wouldn't let myself slack. I'd always want to keep going, and, and that's what I really thought of the last year or so, and it's really paid off for me. Great footwork, new footwork in this program. You were thinking about the spins as well. Definitely. Um, a, lot of, a lot of different things I wanted to clean up this year, and especially the spins. And uh, I was thinking a lot about the spins, the, the revolutions, and trying to get them in there. Because the, during the week, every time I practiced, either one spin was short or one of the other ones. So I made sure all of them were right tonight. And uh, the jumps flowed, and, and uh, everything sort of came together tonight. It felt great. It did come together. You're the leader. Uh, congratulations and all the best in the free program. Thank you very much. Men's free skate tomorrow night in Red Deer. Still to come, the pair's free skate. We'll look back to last night as well.